Goosebumps is the new movie based off of the Goosebumps book series written by R.L. Stein, which I have loved ever since I was in second grade. And what this movie's about is this new kid named Zach, he has to move to Madison, Delaware because his mom is looking for a job as a vice principal, and he moves in next door to this cute girl named Hannah, and it's like, oh, we got a relationship going on, ain't that swell? But then, oh no, her dad is really creepy and played by Jack Black, I wonder what's going on there. So when he hears a scream coming from her house one night, he sneaks in and finds a bunch of Goosebumps manuscripts, he unlocks one of them and the abominable snowman comes out, so he and his weird nerdy friend play by Ryan Lee and Hannah and her dad, R.L. Stein, have to capture all the monsters. And I was really looking forward to this movie. Yes, this is from the guy who made Gulliver's Travels and Shark Tale. Yes, this w is from the writer of Turbo and Shrek Forever After. But I have loved Goosebumps for the, my whole life, actually. I have a bunch of books in my bookshelf. I even like that terrible TV show that is hilarious to watch and even though there are some things I was worried about from the trailers I was still impressed by them and it made me want to see the movie and guys I had a really fun time with Goosebumps even if you didn't read the books or watch the TV show I think you will still have some enjoyment with this film you just might not be able to know about some certain things they bring up because it's in the books or it's in the show. One thing I really was surprised by was that Jack Black really nailed it with R.L. Stein. He acted the way I always thought R.L. Stein would act until I found out he was like this older man who does isn't like Jack Black at all. Like, seriously, they don't look like each other at all. His performance as R.L. Stein is over the top and goofy weird, but he is not overdoing it. He's doing it exactly right. He's doing just what he should be in a kid's film, and I really like Jack Black in this movie, and I thought he was hilarious. And the main character, Zack, who moves in next door to R.L. Stein, I thought he was really good too. I've only seen him in Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, and Prisoners, but I thought he was really good in those films. And he was also in a couple episodes of R.L. Stein's The Haunting Hour, which is basically Goosebumps except for a new generation. And he was really good in this movie too, and Hannah, the potential love interest to Zach, she was really good too. I was a little worried she was just going to be that uninteresting girl who just so happens to be the daughter of R.L. Stein, but something very interesting happens with her character later on that actually fleshed her out a bit more and I like that and I like their relationship together I liked her relationship with her dad also and Ryan Lee plays champion or champ for short he's basically the nerdiest kid in school who basically tries to be the ladies man but in actuality he's a nerd and you may recognize Ryan Lee not only from a haunting hour episode as well but he was in super 8 super 8 remember that kid Ryan Lee super 8 he was the kid who liked to blow stuff up. I just remembered who he was as soon as I looked him up on IMDb. It was like, who was that kid again? Ryan Lee. Let me see. Oh my god, Super 8! But yeah, I thought he was really good in this movie too. Very funny also. And that's a really great plus to this movie is that even though there are a couple things that happen that could scare younger children and a couple jump scares also that this movie actually is really hilarious there's even one self-aware joke that happens like uh, it's very self-aware as soon as you spot it you'll be like that is one of the most self-aware jokes i've ever seen let's just say it involves a cameo from a specific person and you're really not going to get that joke unless you know who this person is as the cameo. And closing it off with the characters, the dummy, Slappy. I have loved Slappy ever since I read the Night of the Living Dummy books, ever since I saw his weird orange hair in the TV show, and in this movie they do him really well. They give him all the crappy puns, they give him the ridiculous laugh, the best jokes. Slappy was awesome. If you're a big fan of Slappy, like I am, then you're gonna love him in this movie. And I love how they basically make him the main evil monster. It's like, yes, there's a snowman, and yes, there's a werewolf, but the main guy is the ventriloquist dummy who has the greatest mind out of all the monsters, and is probably the fan favorite of all of the monsters. And Slappy is voiced by Jack Black. So, yeah. And I really like the plot of this movie also, the way they executed it. It was really fun. And a lot of the sequences that happen are really, really fun. And yes, this movie also has a twist at the very end just like most of the Goosebumps books and the TV show episodes, there is always a twist, 
And in this movie, there is a twist ending also, and it doesn't make that much sense if you think about it. However, as much as I thought this movie was really fun, and I thought it was really well acted, the jokes were great, as much as I thought this movie was well acted, the chemistry between R.L. Stein and Hannah, and Champ, and Zack, was really well done, like they're bouncing off each other, they don't really like each other all the way, but they kinda have to work together because monsters and stuff. And that chemistry really worked. As much as I like the acting, as much as I like the action sequences, as much as I really like the plot of this movie, I thought this was a very interesting plot for this movie, and I really liked the way it turned out. However, this movie does have a few flaws that I must bring up. First off, the CGI. I noticed it in the trailer, and I'm gonna bring it in here too. It's not entirely convincing. There are a couple shots that happen and you're like, okay, that is actually really freaking cool. But there are a couple th shots that happen where you're like, oh, no. For example, there's one very, 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 very noticeable shot that happens in the Werewolf of Beaver Swamp grocery store scene. It's like a weird focus on the werewolf and it kind of like pans out and you can just really notice that that's not real and as soon as I saw that shot I almost wanted to say out loud in the theater really but for the most part the CGI is pretty cool to look at it's just there are a couple parts that are very noticeable there are a couple characters that show up that don't really have that much of an impact for instance the mom what is she here for to be the new vice principal and to introduce a conflict with Zack that's gonna go into the message of the whole film later and tell a really bad twerking joke oh yeah and get hit on by this a PE coach that really doesn't go anywhere, so... Mm, I think maybe she could have been more involved, so maybe her character could have been fleshed out, a bigger impact on the message would have happened, I don't know. Also, Aunt Jillian, she was funny, but she really was only there to kind of fall in love with R.L. Stein, and that only happens in, like, two scenes, so... Eh. And there is a girl kind of thrown in just so Champ can have a love interest, barely fleshed out, you only get to see one interaction with them, and it's barely an interaction, but all of a sudden they fall in love near the end of the movie, and that was really odd. And I gotta say, the message of this movie, I thought it was really cool, but they kinda cheat. And if you want an example of a message kinda cheating, you can also look at Hotel Transylvania 2, and these are kinda spoilers for Hotel Transylvania 2, so if you haven't seen Hotel Transylvania 2, you can leave. Unless you don't care, then let's go. Basically, Dracula learned later on that it doesn't matter what his grandson would turn into, a vampire or a human, it just mattered that it, it was his grandson. But then all of a sudden, the grandson is a vampire and everything's okay, Drac never needed to worry, and that was kind of cheating. I think the message of Hotel Transylvania 2 could have impacted more if he actually turned out to be a human. And in Goosebumps, they do a thing, like, they're, you'll understand the message as soon as they kind of get near the end of the film. But then they do something else that happens, and they kind of cheat. But overall, I thought Goosebumps was really fun. For me, I could watch it again. I thought it was really fun as a fan of the Goosebumps books. I give it a f double thumbs up. However, it does have some flaws, and as a fan of Goosebumps, I am not going to ignore those flaws. Just because I'm a fan of Goosebumps doesn't mean I can just ignore flaws. <laughs> but overall, I thought it was a really fun movie, very well acted, very funny. If you want to have a good time at the movies, if you don't want to see a movie that's overly creepy like Crimson Peak or very serious and dramatic like Bridge of Spies, Goosebumps is the movie for you. And I'm gonna give Goosebumps a B. I hope you guys check it out, especially if you're fans of the books. If you're fans of the books, please go see it. You will love it. I'm pretty sure you will adore it like I do. And guys, I did see this movie at an advanced screening, so some people out there probably haven't seen this movie yet, but I'm gonna ask it when you guys do see it. What did you think of it? Leave it in the comments below. And I'm gonna try to get reviews for Sicario and Everest out tomorrow, but I wanna see Bridge of Spies also that night. So we'll see. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.